Hey brothers and sisters, thank you once again for joining. And today's video is going to be about the Navu Expositor and Joseph Smith. So I'm going to give you a quick uh, background on this. You could have the right context to understand it. So the this the Navu Expositor was a printing press, and this took this was actually volume number. One, they only made one, and why? Because, as the name says, expositor, they exposed uh, Joseph Smith. And during this time, when they were exposing Jason, Joseph Smith, it was basically his last, the climax of his whole thing, his whole sham, scam, all that stuff. And the people who wrote this, this article, um, was uh, they they all agreed to expose him. As you're going to see. And it wasn't. It wasn't Christians. Like it was Mormons themselves. So. Because like earlier in this. In this. Uh, when this article I read. Like they, they confess that they did believe in. Some some of his. Uh, I guess most of his doctrines. So. I mean it wasn't like some. People who hated his religion. And. And. And hated his doctrines and etc. They just exposed him for all the evil stuff he did. So, um, so you know, Mormons can't say that it was just hate. You know, Christians hating other people who hated them, the religion. It was a devil. You know, whatever, uh, whatever excuse they try to bring. So, yeah, this is an actual. What's pictured right here in this picture is an actual copy of it. Pretty sure if there was any other ones, probably was destroyed, you know, uh, because this was it was the only issue. So imagine the rarity of this document. Um, they only pu published one. <laughs> so uh, upon um, this being published and circulating, uh, Joseph Smith found out and he got really mad and he. he Joseph Smith was building an army, like his own army, a little militia, and he was gaining power. This was like at the height of his power, and um, he ordered he ordered to uh, his little army to destroy the novel expositor, the building you see right here, and um, so the little army went. Like a mob and they destroyed his printing press. So that's why there's only one. One volume. One issue. So he destroyed it. And this was basically. the This this article. Was a catalyst for his own demise. His own destruction. Because after that. Uh, a mob came against him. And filled. Filled with a lot of people. That didn't like him. Based on his. Uh doctrines of pearl marriage and etc as you will see in the in the article and they went to his art they went to his the, he got jailed um joseph smith got jailed and a mob came to to the jail in carthage illinois and um they killed him and his brother and um yeah so i don't want to go too much into detail of his death because that's another interesting subject and there's a lot of important details so I'm just giving a general out view outline of it but today we're just gonna talk the talk about the catalyst the first step that led to his demise which is this article and later on I will be sharing more interesting historical articles that are facts uh, that speak about uh, this man, his character, and it's just crazy. It's it's crazy how I'm gonna do a video, um, how these false prophets, false teachers, false court leaders, how much they have, they have so much in common. It's like they have the same spirit. False prophets, um, they all have a lot of things in common. So, okay, we're just going to start with the, 
the the article and you could find that article on your own just put the novel expositor you could find it on pdf anywhere you could read it <clears throat> it would be nice to even just own a, a copy of it um but it's it's very interesting and it's just one article of many there was some before and how it was all just a sham so I'll start that's a picture right here of they destroyed the printing press so well imagine doing that today destroying um, if 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 they were lying he would have just taken them to court for libel but he knew they weren't and they had exposed them so they say um, violence is the is the weapon used by people who don't have the reason so all right okay so it's here this is how it looks like it was an actual real historical document um part one issued june 7 1844 published by william law so i'm not going to read the whole thing because it had poetry um and other stuff it was like it was like a newspaper so i'm just gonna skip to the parts where it gets to the point and you could read it the whole thing yourself it's interesting and it's gonna start where basically um people are just stating their case they're just writing their whole they're speaking their hearts out concerning uh joseph smith and his character so it's you know 18 1844 so it's in that context so here we go. Artillery, as well as in the silence of midnight, it speaks a language understood by the incarcerated spirit. As well as he who is unfettered and free, yet to those who will not see, it is dark, mysterious, a secret as a grave. And secret as a grave, we believe that all men professing to be the ministers of God should keep steadily in view the honor and glory of God, the salvation of souls and the amelioration of man's condition. And among their cardinal virtues ought to be found those of faith, hope, virtue, and charity. But with Joseph Smith and many other official characters in the church, they are, they are words without any meanings attached, words as ornaments, exotics, nature for display, virtues which throwing aside the existence of God. The existence of a God, the peace, happiness, welfare, and good order of society require that they should be preserved pure, immaculate, and uncorroded. We most solemnly and sincerely declare God, this day being witness of the truth and sincerity of our designs and statements, that happy will it be with those who examine and scan Joseph Smith's pretensions to righteousness, and take counsel of human affairs and of the experience of times gone by. Do not yield up tranquility superiority to that man which the reasonableness of past events and the laws of our country declare to be pernicious and diabolical. We hope many items of doctrine as now taught, some of which, however, are taught secretly and which, however, are taught secretly and denied openly, which we know positively is the case and others publicly considerate men will treat with contempt, for we declare them heretical and damnable in their influence. Though they find many devotees, how shall he who has drunk drank of the poisonous draft teach virtue? In the steed thereof, when the criminal ought to plead guilty to the court, the court is obliged to plead guilty to the criminal. We appeal to humanity and ask, what shall we do? Shall we lie supinely and suffer ourselves to be metamorphosed into beasts by the siren tongue? We answer that our country and our God require that we should rectify the tree. We have called upon him to repent, and as soon as he... showed fruits meet for repentance... We stood ready to seize him by the hand of fellowship and throw him the mantle of protection, for it is the salvation of souls we desire, and not our, our own aggrandizement. We are earnestly seeking to explode the vicious principles of Joseph Smith 
and those who practice the same ambitions and whoredoms, which we verily know are not accordant and con consonant with the principles of Jesus Christ and the apostles. And for that purpose and with that end in view, with an eye single, the glory of God, we have dared to gird on the armor and with God at our head, we most solemnly and sincerely declare that the sword of truth shall not depart from the thigh, nor nor the buckler from the arm until we can enjoy those glory, glorious privileges which nature's God and our country's law have guaranteed us. Freedom of speech, the liberty of the press, and the right to worship God as seemeth us good. We are aware, however, that we are hazardly, hazarding every earthly blessing, particularly property, and probably life itself, in striking this blow at the tyranny and oppression, yet notwithstanding, we most solemnly declare that no man or set of men combined shall with impunity violate obligations as sacred as many which have been violated, unless reason, justice, and virtue have become ashamed and sought the haunt of the grave, though our lives be the forfeiture, many of us have sought a reformation in the church without a public exposition of the enormities of crimes practiced by its leaders, thinking that if they would hearken to counsel and show fruit meet for repentance, it would be as acceptable with God as though they were exposed to public gaze. For the private path, the secret acts of men, if noble, far the noblest of their lives. But our petitions were treated with contempt and in many cases the petitioners spurned the pres their presence and particularly by Joseph, who would state that if he had sinned and was guilty of the charges, we would charge him with, he would not make acknowledgement, but would rather be damned, for it would detract from his dignity and would consequently ruin and prove the overthrow of the church. We would ask him on the other hand, if the overthrow of the church was not inevitable, to which he often replies, that we would all go to hell together and convert it into a heaven by casting the devil out, and says he, hell is by no means a place this world of fools suppose it to be, but on the contrary, it is quite an agreeable place, to which we would now reply, he can enjoy if he is determined not to desist from his evil ways. But as for us and ours, quick note here, he was too prideful to repent. But as for us and ours, we will serve the Lord our God. It is absurd for men to assert that all is well, while wicked and corrupt men are seeking our destruction by perversion of sacred things. For all is not well, while whoredoms and all manner of abominations are practiced under the cloak of religion. Lo, the wolf is in the fold, arrayed in sheep's clothing, and is spreading death and devastation among the saints. And we say to the watchmen standing upon the walls, Cry aloud and spare not, for the day of the Lord is at hand. A day cruel both with wrath and fierce anger to lay the land desolate. It is a notorious fact that many females, many female, females in foreign climes and in, and in countries to us and in countries to us unknown, even in the most distant regions of the Eastern Hemisphere, have been induced by the sound of the gospel to forsake friends and embark upon a voyage across waters that lie stretched over the greater portion of the globe, as they supposed to glorify God, that they might thereby stand acquitted in the great day of God Almighty. But what is taught them on, the, on their arrival at this place? They are visited by some of the strikers, for we know not what else to call them, and are requested to hold on and be faithful, for there are great blessings awaiting the righteous. And that God has great mysteries in store for those who love the Lord and cling to Brother Joseph. They are also notified that Brother Joseph will see them soon, and reveal the mysteries of heaven to their full understanding which seldom fails to inspire them with new confidence in the prophet, as well as a great anxiety to know what God has laid up in store for them. In return for the great sacrifice of the father and mother of gold and silver, which they gladly left far behind that they might be gathered into the fold and numbered among the chosen of God, they are visited again, and what is the result? They are requested to meet brother Joseph 
or some of the 12 at some ins insulated point or at some particularly described place on the bank of the Mississippi or at some room which wears upon its front positively no admittance. The harmless, inoffensive, and unsuspecting creatures are so devoted to the prophet and the cause of Jesus Christ that they do not dream of the deep laid and fatal scheme which prostrates happiness and renders death itself desirable. But they meet him, expecting to receive through him a blessing and learn the will of the Lord concerning them. And what waits the faithful follower of Joseph, the apostle and prophet of God, when in the stead thereof they are told after having been sworn in one of the most solemn manners to never divulge what is revealed to them, with a penalty of, de of death attached, that God Almighty has revealed it to him, that she should be his, Joseph's spiritual wife. For it was right anciently, and God will tolerate it again. But we must keep those pleasures and blessings from the world, for until there is a change in the government, we will endanger ourselves by practicing it, but we can enjoy the blessings of Jacob and David and others, as well to be deprived of them if we do not expose ourselves to the law of the land. She is thunderstruck, faint, recovers and refuses. The prophet damns her if she rejects. She thinks of the great sacrifice and of the many thousand miles she has traveled over sea and land that she might save her soul from pending ruin and replies, God's will be done and not mine. The prophet and his devotees in this way are gratified. The next step to avoid public exposition from the common course of things. They are sent away for a time until all is well, after which they return as from a long visit. Those whom no power or influence could seduce except that which is wielded by some individual feigning to be God must realize the remarks of an able writer when she when he says if woman's feelings are turned to ministers of sorrow where shall he look for consolation her lot is to be wooed and won her heart is like some fortress that has been captured sacked abandoned and left desolate with her the desire of her heart has failed the great charm of existence is at as is at an end she neglects all of the cheerful exercises of life which glade in the spirits and quicken the pulses and send the tide of life in healthful currents through the veins. Her rest is broken. The sweet refreshment of sleep is poisoned by melancholy dreams. Dry sour, dry sour sorrow drinks her blood until her enfeebled frame sinks under the slightest external injury. Look for her after a little while and you find friendship weeping over her untimely grave and wondering that one who but so recently glowed with all the radiance of health and beauty shall so speedily be brought down to darkness and despair you will be told of some wintry chill of some casual indisposition that laid her low but no one knows of the mental malady that previously sapped her strength and made her so easy prey to the spoiler she is like some tender tree the pride and beauty of the grove graceful in its form bright in its foliage but with a warm praying at its heart we find it withered when it should be almost luxuriant we see it drooping its branches to the earth and shedding leaf by leaf until wasted and perished away it falls in the stillness of the forest and as we muse over the beautiful ruin we strive in vain to recollect the blast or thunderbolt that could have smitten it with decay but no one knows the cause except the foul fiend who perpetrated the diabolical deed. Our hearts have mourned and bled at the wretched and miserable condition of females in this place. Many orphans have been the victims of misery and wretchedness through the influence that has been exerted over them under the cloak of religion and afterwards in consequence of that jealous disposition with, which predominates over the minds of some have been turned upon a wide world fatherless and motherless destitute of friends and fortune, and have robbed of that which nothing but death can restore. Men solace themselves by saying that the facts slumber in the dark caverns of midnight, but, lo, it is sudden day, and the dark deeds of foul friends shall be exposed from the housetops. A departed spirit of once the residence of St. Louis 
shall yet cry out for vengeance. It is difficult, perhaps impossible, to describe the wretchedness of females in this place without wounding the feelings of the benevolent or shocking the delicacy of the refined. But the truth shall come to the world. The remedy can never be applied unless the disease is known. The sympathy ever anxious to relieve cannot be felt before the misery is seen. The charity that kindles of the tale of, of woe can never act with adequate efficiency till it is made to see the pollution and guilt of man now buried in the death shades of heathenism. Shall we then, however painful the sight, shrink from the contemplation of their real estate? We answer, we will not. If permitted to live as we before stated, it is the vicious principles of man we are determined to explode. It is not that we have in any private feelings to gratify or any private pig to settle. That has induced us to be thus plain, for we can respect and love the criminal if there is any hope of reformation. But there is a point beyond which forbearance ceases to be a virtue. The next important item which presents itself for our consideration is the attempt, of, the attempt at political power and influence, which we verily believe to be prosperous and absurd. We believe it is inconsistent and in accordance and accordance with the Christian religion. We do not believe that God ever raised up a prophet to Christianize a world by political schemes and intrigue. It is not the way God captivates the heart of the unbeliever, but on the contrary, by preaching truth in its own native simplicity and in, in its own original purity, unadorned with anything except its own indigenous beauties. Joseph may plead he has been injured, abused, and his petitions treated with contempt by the general government, and that the only desires and influence of, of a political character that will warrant him redress of the grievances. But we care not. The faithful followers of Jesus must. The faithful followers of Jesus Christ must bear in this age, as well as Christ and the apostles did anciently, Although a frowning world may have crushed him to the dust, although un unpitying France may have passed him by, although hope, the great comforter in an affliction, may have burst forth and fled from his troubled bosom, yet in Jesus there is a balsam for every wound, and a cordial to assuage an agonized mind. Among the many items of false doctrine that are taught in the church is the doctrine of many gods. One of the most direful in its effects that are characterized the world for many centuries, we know not what to call it other than blasphemy, for it is most. All right, brothers and sisters in Christ, this is the end of the first part. I will post the next later. It will probably be three parts. And as we can see here, a little bit of Joseph's character that he was basically using this false religion to hook up with women. Um, he did he was too proud to repent and uh, with this up and coming blasphemy teaching of many gods so for these reasons he destroyed this this press which ultimately led to his death but um, all his sins caught up to him and these character traits he has, he has in common with Muhammad, the false prophet, and other false prophets. They all have things in common. And the funny thing is that Joseph Smith even called himself the second Muhammad. Which they just had, they both had that demonic spirit of false doctrine, false teachings, false prophets. So God bless you guys and see you again.